business is not always fair, right? And this was a decision Never. for these guys. It was, it was their in individual businesses. And the tour didn't say you couldn't go. They said, if you go, you can't come back. So you, they had the, every right to go and they were free to go. And I think a lot of those guys chose legacy and purpose over money. Yep. And at, at that time, given what they knew, what the tour told them, which was all true at the time, given all the information that was out there, that was their decision. So mm -hmm. I'm sorry, guys. Like, you know, if, if two companies were founded and one does really well and one doesn't do as well, the smarter guy may have a worse company, but he's smarter. Well, what does he get? Equal amount of money? No, right. I'm sorry. Life's not always fair. Love it. All right. Welcome back. Well, is it welcome back? How, can how long you, have we how been can you be away? Welcome, Two weeks. Yeah. Welcome back yeah. to another episode of Straight <laughs> Down the Middle-ish. Here we go. Today, I have one of my good buddies, an old college teammate of mine. Now he is a private investor and currently Ponte Vedra's most eligible bachelor, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Tyler Brown. Let's give it up for Tyler. Oh, golf clap, welcome. Thanks, Tyler. Gentlemen. Thanks for coming in. Coming Good to in, be bud. here. Appreciate it. That list is not public knowledge, but uh, we we have it here. I saw it in a magazine the other day. What are you talking about? Okay. Top ten most eligible bachelors. St. John's County's finest. So it's a short list, guys. <laughs> Pretty short list. Just <laughs> stop. All right, this is our first. This is our first show since the news came out about. What are we calling? Is it? it they it's say not it's a merger. A merger. It, it's, it's not, not a merger. The, the word merger was way too strong, but that's uh, that's how they like to do it this day. You attract the most eyeballs, and when I looked at it, the first word was yeah, merger. I don't think it's a merger. It's a partnership. I would say, Tyler. I would call it a minority investment into a large, uh, new to be formed for profit company. Okay. And Tyler, your family was involved with the tour as well yep. for years, right? Yep. We were sponsors or partners for seven and a half years mm -hmm. from 2011 through middle of 20 or late 2019. Okay. Yeah. Web.com, they were yep. awesome. Like yep. nothing wrong with Nationwide, but uh, when your dad, David, and the whole crew came on, I think, I guess just being in town and having you know, like a, you know, really, like really invested. You're in the town, you're on the same team. And not that Nationwide wasn't there in Columbus and they did a great job, but uh, that took that tour to a new level, I thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, these companies evolved. Nationwide had a, they had an objective for eight years and it was to have their name out there on a consistent basis over mm -hmm. the course of a season. And then it evolved to let's sponsor a big tournament. So, yeah. and same thing for web. We want to get our name out there, make a splash. It worked, yeah. um, and then the company we we went private. We were um, on Nasdaq publicly traded for a while, and so. then when we changed the company, we we uh, sold the sponsorship back to the tour. Okay, were y'all the ones who helped bring in uh, the what was it the Web dot com finals to Atlantic Beach? We were, yeah, yeah. We wanted to um, make the event very local, very Jacksonville oriented. So yeah, it was at TPC Sawgrass in the Valley Course, which I'm sure you guys played in it. Or I played least, a couple times. Yeah, yeah, it was gr it was a great event, but kind of in the shadow of the players championship or the players and we wanted to make it its own mm -hmm. standalone identity so we we thought like what's what's a good course or community that really represents the beach vibe and um kind of what makes Jacksonville really cool so that, ab was it it was awesome too those events were awesome all right let's get back to the to the lift stuff yeah or yeah. the tour stuff let's merge. Aaron, let's dive right in off the rip tell me your feelings gotta wait and see so eventually, uh, originally when it all came out, we saw players saying this, saying that. And Jeff Ogilvy, I thought, summed it up beautifully right out of the player meeting. He's like, I'm not going to stand here and pretend that I know what's going on and cast, you know, doubts over this and that. He's like, we've got to wait and see. Clearly, it must have come out a little earlier than they wanted. They mm -hmm. wanted to have some sort of, sort of framework. And it, maybe there, it was a fear of a leak or whatever. But the macro is is there's get they're going to work together we don't know what form they've got to work it out mm -hmm. just wait and see it, you know maybe so maybe not it might be the best thing ever it might not but i'm willing to wait and see of course i don't know shit. it uh, was it was the most shocking announcement unbelievable in in my lifetime in sports i mm -hmm. mean just the way it had to feel internally to to shift what you've been saying this entire time now you're you're going the other way i mean that's i was just, a deerwood i was on the eighth ooh. hole and someone texts me just the you were the, playing with cam smith the twitter ground. i was playing I, was, <laughs> I yelled out i was in the cart there at eighth greens at par three at deerwood i said you're not gonna believe this <laughs> it's like bj tour to merge with live golf or whatever and cam's like ah oh, you're a fucking idiot you know blah blah and then 
you know, there was, I said, no, this is CNBC. Mm -hmm. the, whoever sent it to me, it was from CNBC and then start reading it. And then someone got on the tour's uh, website and it was on there. And then he spoke with his agent and said, yeah, there's going to be a pre-recorded announcement played at 10.30 on CNBC. So we all watched it and it wasn't like there was cheering or, or moaning. It was just like, oh, shock, shock. Like there's nothing in this. Let's wait and see. But it's, it seems positive for the macro like, I, I don't know there's obviously not everyone can win mm -hmm. and we'll talk about this going forward because Jay Monaghan like different situation he's we'll talk about that later. but his whole time he's, he's he, he, not everyone can win ever right. when you're dealing with the tour mm -hmm. Tyler Tyler what give me your feelings the first feeling was negative uh, about 10 minutes later it became positive once I actually saw Jay's letter to the players and it outlined what they were doing and it mm -hmm. clarified that it wasn't a merger it wasn't the Saudis taking over control of the tour then I realized that this is probably the growth investment the tour needed to really be able to change their business model dramatically. I mean, they've been kind of, you know, it's an old tangled company that's been around for a long time. So to really drive meaningful change, something needed to come from the outside, either, you know, either environmentally or, or investment. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I think it's going to be, I think history will tell us. I think right now a lot of the noise is around how it came to be, um, you know, the, the social, cultural but aspect of it. The but secretive, but got, that all, probably wasn't planned. Also, yeah. golf Twitter is just... Uh, yeah, it's pretty loud. Special place in hell. And I some mean. of the players, too. Some of the players <laughs> coming out and like, hold on. Oh, you don't even know, like, <laughs> what's what this is going to be. And everyone's like, Tyler, we talked about this the other day about some of the golfers, some of our friends, no disrespect, but I don't think you get it with a lot of other sports. A lot of these guys, because they play pro-ams, they're around business guys, they're wealthy themselves. They literally, there'd be 97 guys on the tour that think they could do Jay Monahan's job and none of them could do it. Yeah, it, and the loudest ones, are they're always thinking micro, usually in those meetings. That's mm -hmm. for sure the case. I've sat in them. The loudest ones, they're usually the dumbest ones. <laughs> yeah, the players get together and they, they start to spread rumors. They start to kind of build this this narrative and it's it's obviously based in some sort of truth but they, they become very um frustrated i've heard a lot of frustration over the years from players and you know having been on i was not a tour player but i was a you know a golfer for a number of years you highly played, competitive you, yeah, but you, yeah, you yeah, played yeah. at the played. you know you the same you know. level without yeah. playing on tour you yeah. played high level mini tours you beat us like w without being there you understand everything what it takes to be a good golfer so, and I, so I was on the player side so to speak i was on the client side for a while i'm, I'm a fan of the tour so I've seen all the different perspectives, at least three of the four perspectives, the fourth being the tournament side. Mm -hmm. And it, it just seems like there's a lot of criticism, but you look at the last year and a half and what, um, what Jay's done and the players are making more money. Uh, the product's gotten better on TV. So I think mm -hmm. as far as results, which ultimately matter the most, um, results are getting better. Yeah. And so in five years, 100%. a couple billion dollars coming in, I bet you it'll, it'll look pretty good. All right. Right. People need to relax. These uh, golfers need to relax. I'm going to give my initial reaction. Okay. Matt, what was your reaction? Oh, I'll reaction? go now. Um, <laughs> when I heard it, initial shock. Mm -hmm. Then I watched it, and just knowing Jay... The way I, I have a personal relationship with Jay. We're all members at the same course. Mm -hmm. Hit balls with Jay on the back of the range of Pablo. Plenty of times. Scott just, and I are not members of Just him yeah. and I. He's, <laughs> a, <laughs> been a, guest he's a dude. He's a dude. He's a great guy. He's got a massive he, heart. Okay, uh -huh. He's a great dude. He is. This guy. He's been he through He looks it, very man. uncomfortable up there, but for, for good reason. I mean, he has been through. Okay, Tim Benjamin had Tiger Woods. Jay Monahan has had COVID in the Saudis. Mm -hmm. All right. This guy has been through the ringer. It's a tough what, duck. what pissed me off after it, I knew I know he wouldn't have made this there there's no way there would have been a decision made like this if we didn't absolutely have to make this decision. Okay? I'm not smart enough to sit here and tell you yes or no. But I know Jay would not have made that decision if we didn't have to make that decision. He didn't okay? want to make that decision, clearly. So yeah. what I know, but where, 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 where my feelings start to change is when these like middle-of-the-road players start ganging up and th basically throwing spears at Jay. Get fucked. Are mm -hmm. you kidding me? Mm -hmm. Like, this guy, I don't care if, if he Report, went back on his to. word or, or whatever. He's running... You can't make everybody happy, first of all. You got... Mm -hmm. Well, you got segments. You got top 50. You got 50 to 100 who could be top 50 You got in one top week. 10, top 10 players. I mean, 
right? They drive, they run the show. The, is, it, is it top 10 or top 30 or what's, it's top, what's the it's number? It's top 20. Oh, tw there's 20 guys. So the middle tier are the basically the comment section. But the bot, the middle no, to no, the bottom. No, they're actually yes, understand it. Yes, yeah. the middle to the bottom are the loudest ones. They think micro. And it pissed me off, them, them ganging up on, on Jay. Jay did not, there was nothing malicious behind this. If they could have stood alone, of course they would have. Like they have the history, they have the, the, the infrastructure, they've got everything that you need to run the tour. But obviously they were, you know, clearly hamstrung somewhere there, whether it be. And you know, this is great news. It, 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 it's great news. It's, it's a ton of money for these guys. Yeah, coming I think my, a, my initial reaction was relief that, okay, this is, it feels like the, the battle's over. We can let the dust settle. This is all going to shake out. You got some smart guys running the show. I think Monaghan's done a fantastic job ever since this started. I mean, he I didn't he, ask for this and he, there was nobody's offered a perfect plan to come out and, combat the saudis their back was against the wall again they were in the court it. system and they were bleeding money would have never thought that the pga tour didn't have deep enough pockets to continue this fight but it is the, the lawyers won here but hindsight's 2020 but i when i watched him go on tv in canada last year i was like why is he doing this? yeah i need to do it yeah you look that, all to see is you just no comment no comment talk to your membership and i don't know why he did that and i obviously he regrets it too but you don't know how it's going to I play think he out. did it because he, he cares he was, he so much scared. and he didn't like the way it was being spun and he in his heart it's genuine he wants I I know he's a good dude. Oh, he is also. Awesome. I know he's a good dude. This was there was nothing skeezy about about this. It had to be done. And honestly like let's be honest, I don't think the two has really even finished a lawsuit. They always seem to settle Jay may be holding for other commissioners that have done sure. stuff that can't get out. Who knows? I'm not starting any conspiracy theories here. Well, how much but of this just, had to... Just re everyone needs to relax. Yeah, like the, in, the, in the situation the tour was in, how much of it had to do with we can't afford to go down this road, like, like we literally can't afford to, or we don't want the, the disclosure of documents on both sides. Sure. Is, do you think that had more to do with it, or do you think it was a financial situation that they were going to going to have to face head on in two years? There's a lot of opinions about the you know the dirty laundry that could get aired out on both sides. I, Who knows? Having been a client of the tour, they're very above board. They're very buttoned up. I mean, every company has its um, you know its skeletons or, mm -hmm. or things they wish they hadn't done a certain way. But I, I think it's it's more about the money, about the economics. I mean. Jay's back to Jay. Like mm -hmm. we all know him pretty well. He's a very loyal guy. He's a good business person and a good person altogether. And so I think he, he, he's incentivized as a commissioner to make more money for the players, to make the product better, to make the, the mm -hmm. clients, the sponsors happier, which he has. And he's personally invested in that success. So he's, I think his passion in his kind of his motivation is to make this a great product and, and to grow the tours presence across the world. So I, you know, to get angry at him, you can even argue the tactics and the path that got there, you know, a year ago in Canada or whatever. But I think really what's, what matters is what the, what do the results say is, he, you know, and, and what's the path he's going to lay out going forward, which we'll probably know a path in two months, I guess. But he's done he's done a great job as CEO. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is running a company and now the, people are getting into the, uh, you know, like a, a, a brand of calling about what does this mean for the game? Like th this is the business of golf. This isn't the game of golf. I mean, this is All right. The game's undefeated. Look at that shit last I, week in Canada. I like it was awesome. Chambly is yeah. never going to change his opinion. So he's going to keep flogging a dead horse and he's just going to like mellow out. Like he's just, his whole thing has been ridiculous too about the blood money. I, I've said it. Go and look at your four hundred one k, and look at all your invest, your, like who you're investing in, Pfizer. It's a global economy. There's blood money everywhere. <laughs> so just, just. And my other thing was with people that oh, if the Saudis have tons of money, is it better off staying there or coming into America? Like I don't know how much tax these guys that are on live. Dustin Johnson all paid last year. It's probably a fair amount of tax mm -hmm. to the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. Isn't it better being over here? Aren't we better off partnering with those guys than I don't know? I'm not into geopolitics much but that say the Saudi goes and does something with Russia or China or work something out what do you think about the guys okay and I want to break this down on, on different levels there's obviously the Rom and the Rory level those guys but middle of the road to back in guys that barely kept their card about wanting to be compensated 
mm-hmm. for staying with Loyalty. the tour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, hold on. A Your job key. got easier than some of the guys left. And there's more money. Right. Like I have a, like the leader, like Chesson Hadley was leading last week after Canada, and he went up there and he said, well, I would like to be compensated. <laughs> And are you kidding me, dude? Mr. Like, Bojang? I absolutely love Justin Hadley. But. Stop it, though. Stop well, I it. mean, Matt, you're a tour member still, so what do you get for being a member, right? I shouldn't get shit. Why? Because why, why if not? Liv gave me an offer, I had the opportunity to entertain it or not. Those guys entertained it. They took a big risk. If you didn't get an offer, I don't understand. You're, right. you're, you've already benefited from it. The purses are more. Big time. So what, what, what do you need to then... So I don't know. Say Kim I understand that the, the Roms and the Rorys that turned down or Hideki turned down Spirit Airlines. I understand that <laughs> they maybe should get some kind of. It's hard to make up five hundred million or whatever it was. But the the lower end dudes but, stop. But again, it was their choice. So this is going to be uh, maybe my angle is coming wrong. So say Hideki got off its right around. He said no. Yeah, you're, so, so you know what, what, good point. Sudden, I'm, with, I'm with you on this so now. I'm not saying you should or you shouldn't. I'm just throwing shit out there. It's been straight down the middle ish. But if they could have taken it. It wasn't is. like they weren't allowed to take it. They could have. Some of the guys did, and they made money. The other guys, look, everyone's going to benefit here at some level, but trying to keep everyone happy, it's not going to happen. What some people are going to have to take a small L and realize that, hey, we're still going to be playing for more money. The PIF is putting they already a ton are of money for more money. Yeah. They already are. Yep. Almost it's a great a, problem to be have, uh, mm-hmm. to have is mm-hmm. where they're at. You know, it, business is not always fair, right? And this was a decision Never. for these guys. It was, it was their in, individual businesses. And the tour c- didn't say you couldn't go. They said if you go, you can't come back. So you, they had the, every right to go, and they were free to go. And I think a lot of those guys chose legacy and purpose over money. Yep. And at, at that time, given what they knew, what the tour told them, which was all true at the time, given all the information out there, that was their decision. So mm-hmm. I'm sorry, guys. Like, you know, if, if two companies are founded and one does really well and one doesn't do as well, the smarter guy may have a worse company, but he's smarter. Well, what does he get? Equal amount of money? No, right. I'm sorry. Life's not always fair. Love it. Most astonishing was the speed. I mean, it's been one year. Well, I mean, how? And they've had a couple of wins in court. The tour has. And, and the legal fees blew me away. Oh, my too. gosh. We're million. in the wrong business. You said 15 million? 50. 50, 50, 50 yeah. Well, well it projected, I don't know, over like X amount. I don't know if they've already written that, but. Either way, it's an astonishing amount. Good lawyers are worth that. But so, what do y'all think? What's I mean? Is there a crystal ball? What's to come of Live? They, they, there's talk of you know at the end of the year we'll take a look at it and thinking with Monahan in control, he's going to squash it. I I kind of doubt that. I don't think that Live is dead. I think that the team concept is something that the money that's coming into the tour wants to see push forward and succeed. I I think Live's dead. I have an idea in my mind, but that's just my own thing. It would be, so cricket, which is not that big over here. I think cricketers make 70% of their money in six weeks in the IPL, the Indian Premier League cricket. It's mad. There's 200,000 people watching, but it's just a short season. So I don't know if it would work, and the guys do want off seasons, but maybe the tour runs from January to August. Then the rest is the is the live event. It goes for eight, ten weeks, two or three in America, around the world. Everyone's flying on the same plane, so the traveling would be as easy as possible. It'd be like a traveling circus. Mm. They're going to get paid tons of money. They're going to entertain all the way around the world. The whole planet is going to get to see them play. That's how I would hope it works, but I don't know. I don't know. Okay, what about this? What, what, the objectives what about are. this? Does Cam, does Cam own his team? I, don't know, well, yeah, I think he's a 25% owner. Okay, yes. so he's 25% owner. When he was 25% owner and it was just live, let's be real, at... The way Liv was going, that team was worth zero. Worth zero. Okay? Yeah. It's yeah. worth zero. Now that the tour has acquired, or they're they're partnering up, okay, yep. that team is worth a lot more money, isn't it? Correct. P- the the potential, yeah. So I, what I do you do? So what? Same, so what happens yeah. there? What I, I, happens I think there? I think Liv and Team Golf are two different things. So I think the brand Liv, in my opinion, will probably go away because there's no real equity in the in the brand. I think that Team Golf sense. and the concept is valuable because there is a different competitive component that fans are going to want to watch. Now, are the guys going to want to play a full season and then during their off season go travel, you know, around the world for 10 weeks? Probably not. But is there a way you could do it where, you yeah, know, subs or something? Yeah. yeah to, to me, it's more like the golf product needs to evolve. I mean, think about golf tournaments they are four days. They've been the same for a hundred years, mm-hmm. right? And it's hard. It's hard for the modern consumer to watch four days of any event or competition. They, they want to watch two hours or three hours like an NBA game. Yeah. So, 
to me, this opens the door to incorporate team formats or different formats that make golf shorter or more interesting, you know, like the new Monday night tomorrow golf thing, which yeah. is a whole different ball of wax. But I, I think live is going to go away. Team golf is going to be bigger and more important going forward. I'm you you I'm, brought up I'm the TGL. Like, I'm glad you did. What's to come of TGL? I mean, is it TGL or tomorrow <laughs> golf or is it both? Tomorrow golf league. Is that yeah, what it stands for? Yeah, that's it. Tomorrow it's like a, a simulator league with, with players. Like, I, I, I haven't heard anything about. I mean, I, well, I heard everyone signing on to it, but mm -hmm. it's kind of been. It's moving. There's it the, behind the scenes. There's deals being done. There's they're building the teams. They're building the the format. I mean, they've got they're building a location in um, Palm Beach, I think. Mm -hmm. The venue. Getting back to the to the live thing real quick with the team as just team aspect in golf. I have talked to quite a few players, and I know Aaron has too on the live, and they are all in on the team stuff. Like Harold Varner, because it's fun. Harold Va that's Harold Varner told me it's the best part out there. Mm -hmm. The team, the team aspect, and that's what Cam is like. I feel like been a little agitated lately because they're not playing to their ability as a team, mm -hmm. and it's more fun if you're finishing third, second, first, than you know in the bottom six. So. Um, Need more that, 6 a.m. Like, workouts with Brooksy. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> but but, but it, it, it goes back to the point I made, you know, in previous episodes. If you ask a, a golfer like why they're so excited to play in the Ryder Cup Presidents Cup, because you, it's fun. Like a, a lot of times you're on your own out there, and we've all played individual sport, you know, for years. It's not. But if you have got someone next to you and you're on a team, there's something calming about it. It's a different set of nerves. But and obviously when when you pull it off and you win, it's it's fun to celebrate with two or three or four or five others rather than, you know, you have your own team and your trainer and all that, but it's not the same. Who do you think the biggest losers will be coming out of this? The low level live guards. Yeah. Same. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're in, they're going like, to struggle. Yeah. Ogletree and, and, and maybe Jed. And I mean, I the, the top 12, 20 live guys will be fine. We yeah, don't know what, what their names alone. They already had tour status, so they've passed champions and come back. But if you came out of like Andy Ogletree or mm -hmm. Chase Kepka, what's Chase Kepka going to do now? What was he doing before? I don't know. He had a good run. Exactly. <laughs> like, I feel like a guy that won't be mad at all. Like, hey, that's, yeah, no, they got we, money. We it, but I mean, that's the thing too. I think Monaghan and that are going to do it very right. Like, do they come back and what's the penalty and does this guy get some money for staying? Yeah, you've got to create a path back for these guys, whether you, you punish them by making them, you know, earn their card back or you're just, you're wise about it. And Community you say, these guys, these guys are, I don't really know, but they'll, they'll work it out. And that's where I think the membership will get a say. Will, will they get to dictate? No, but they'll have a voice and it'll, I think it's all going to be fine. Do you guys think players will get equity in this new for-profit company if they do i hope it's like only five guys top yeah how do you pick the five yeah uh, no, that's that's impossible and how much equity and and is it merit-based performance-based how do you, you quantify know? this correct right i've heard 50 different well, you ideas maybe 10 guys. You, like the you can what, find ways to get it to them what's the best pip? idea you've heard like 10 percent of profits distributed you haven't heard one yet? i haven't heard any good ideas I, I think what you could do this is gonna i shouldn't say this out loud but you could <laughs> issue a little bit of shares every year based on performance. You could uh -huh. rank it, you know, based like FedEx Cup. And then, you know, based on uh, every year, those are there's new shares issued. So it's not like you get a big lump sum your first year because you're Rory. But it could be, hey, you're Rory. So here's like some kind of uh, PIP mm -hmm. plus performance ranking. Here's your shares. And the next year we'll re-rank everybody based on, because it's got to be based on media and kind of brand equity of the player plus performance on the course. Kind of an earn out, like a way to... Like, to, an, like an earn out, yeah. yeah. Um, you got to find a way to get like the Rory's, the guys that stuck their okay, neck out. Okay, do you think Jay? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna play Jay for a second. With was it Yasir? Yasir. 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 Yeah, Yasir. Okay, <laughs> Jay's in meeting with Yasir. All right, look, I get it. We can do this, but man, I need you to do me a solid. Whatever you offered those guys, like, can you just wire it to them <laughs> separately, <laughs> and then and then we'll, we'll we'll do this deal. I mean. And when they pay taxes, nobody will know about no, it. Nobody yeah. yeah, that's right. There's a lot of there's a lot of tax. This not to get too in the weeds here, but there's a lot of complexity behind how the money gets distributed. Someone told me the other day, oh, the tour, like the Saudis will give a billion dollar check to the tour, which will get like issued to the top twenty players. And I'm thinking, well, if you're number twenty one, that's kind of a bad deal, you know. So right. that's not gonna that doesn't make sense to me. But I'm sure there's gonna be a room with a whiteboard and thirty ideas and weeks and weeks of analysis and we'll, not everyone we'll will win, what it is. but they'll come out with the best solution possible. I'm pretty confident in that. Just like very confident. this deal. That's kind of the same thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder how much we'll learn about what went into it and why this was the decision and the plan. And we'll, we'll hear the plan, but if it's a for-profit company, it's private. Yeah. They don't have to tell us everything. So we'll just have to kind of keep guessing to, to an extent. But, but again, the, the POF is going to put a bunch of money and it's going to go to the golfers on the tour. Shut up. Stop complaining. Like, I, yes, you, you may have given up a deal to go to LIV, but you gave up like it's your choice right like choices have consequences and I'm, and I'm not on either side i think i've never have been but it's the screaming kid are we going to just keep rewarding like wah, squeaky you know, wheels oh, yeah i don't know just it's going to be fine speaking of squeaky wheels i wonder about uh greg norman's future and all this he's out he's he? been quiet tiger's See? been quiet there's a few people that have been quiet tiger's this. been very quiet mm-hmm any surgery too though maybe Probably. It's not much. <laughs> so what, what can he say? Yeah, he, he turned over. He turned over much, the mic. Yeah. He I turned that agree. mic over. Until you know anything, like everybody else, we're just guessing on what what is and what will be. You know, back to the the last week or the two weeks ago, the player meeting, and just what you mentioned up front, having to see picturing Jay up there just getting like insults and yeah. criticism hurled at him by a large majority of the room, just it feels very unprofessional and very unbusinesslike, which is, this is a business conversation. This is not a, a right. town hall meeting where you should just, there was a guy you know, that was in there on TikTok with his phone like this. Like, oh, here's the man of the hour. Just doing yeah. it for, I mean, get out of here, dude. Uh, you're yeah. a, you're a clown. Get yeah. out of here. And, and for Jay Monahan, not to like, I could never do it. Cause you know, I am, but imagine these people have got no fucking clue. Nothing, nothing about balance sheets. Would, wouldn't even know what a balance sheet looked like. They got no clue. Up there going, ah, oh, I would tear if I was. I wish Jay could, you could see what he's thinking and it'd be projected. Like, sit down, you little flea. You got no clue what I've been dealing with for the last year, you little fucking piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how's that kosher to have a phone in there that you're turning on filming uh, for TikTok? It's, it's, that's kicked out, kicked out that's of the, the locker That's the world room. we live in now, man. And people actually think that. Those kind of guys are cool too. It's unbelievable. Well, the players were, were pissed about not being in the loop, and then they've already proven the past year that they're going to publish wherever they get right. sent anyway. Yeah. So they've not all the players. A few players don't have a lot of credibility or trust because but they if you don't send keep something to to the. You have to send it to all of them. You can't just pick the players you want to send stuff to. So yeah, you're right. Yeah, I do. I do love how it all went down. Uh, Jimmy Dune sends a WhatsApp message to Yasir, like, how do you get Yasir's contact? And then, boom, their next thing, they're meeting in, like, Switzerland. Or It sounds like a Bond film. It does. I wonder if it was, like, that would be cool if it was all documented and one day <laughs> we get to see it. I think him being a part of it seems to have a lot of credibility. He was a successful businessman, lost a lot of people you in, know Jimmy in, in the 9-11 thing. No, I don't. No? I heard so good things, though. I just think it makes a lot of sense that if, if he's going down this path, you know, he's sensitive to a lot of issues that happened 20 years ago mm-hmm. that's a, that's a good thing have, have trust in that it's hard to trust someone you don't really know but i think that's a good thing well from a from a deal standpoint you know the there's probably going to be two or three or four really key points to the deal that they outlined on cnbc and in the player letter but the agreement hasn't been written yet and there's gonna be a lot of little nuance in there mm-hmm. but ultimately if, if the saudis put money in and it's not a controlling interest the tour still has control like it has had for you know 50 years now if in five years the saudis put more money in or individual deals they have more money in then that's where it gets complicated where you know you've got more conflict of interest about who's calling you know, who, who has uh, a vested interest in different decisions and things and that's that's kind of the piece that we need to understand better but it sounds like based on what the talking points were that jay and the tours current board have control and the Saudis are kind of along for the ride to make money and to have a little more of a cultural exposure to, mm-hmm. the, to American sports. Yeah, like a seat at the table. That's yeah. what. That's kind of what they wanted the whole time, right? Seat but, at but the table. It, not to if you flip the other side too, that would be the argument that the live guys would say it was this is what we wanted all along, and you didn't entertain this idea at the start. A lot of those players will say that over there. Well, so what? What about this? So what? If, what if um, the tour had talked to? PGL, the okay. other group, right? Yeah. A couple of years ago and the Saudis. And what if um, there was a plan and Jay goes to the board and the players and says, hey, we're going to totally revolutionize our tour three years ago. Oh, they would have been how, like, how would that go? What? Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, it's easy now looking back and sure. saying, well, why? You know, you could kind of armchair quarterback it, but that'd be a really hard sell, I'd say. Maybe an impossible sell at that point. Impossible. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. That's and a great point. I mean, that, so. that was out there. That was, I think, before Liv and Norman were even talked about, the PGL was, was coming for the tour. Yeah. Um, hey, what's going on with your golf game now? Are you? I mean, I played with you the other day. It was pretty freaking good. That was the worst I've played in really? two, Dude, two years. Dude, you play a lot of golf then. I, I think... <laughs> No, I think I did too many pull-ups in the gym that morning. Something wasn't wasn't firing. You had me. That was your chance to get to, to really take get me down. You? I think okay. we, we broke even. Right? Now we're so, good. What's, no, what's your handicap? It. What's your index? Are Dude. you not trying to qualify for like stuff? Like you should be playing. You should be. We could play. We should up. play the US four ball. I don't have amateur status back. Yeah. Did you try that US four ball this <laughs> I, year? I, I tried to qualify last year. Um, Robbie White, former Gator. We were we played it down at Golden Ocala in the qualifier. We didn't even sniff it. Did um, you play with Solly one time? I did, yeah, uh, two years ago. It was called the. Um, it's a tournament at Golden Ocala. It's a it's a three day four ball tournament, and um, so it wasn't a qualifier. That was no, it, it was like an invitational tournament. We finished, I think, third. We did pretty pretty really? well. But he's a good player. He's um, hits a pretty good good competitor. But um, but I've been trying to get back into competitive golf the last couple of years. You know, it's one of those things where you play in the club championship. You play with your buddies and you shoot sixty five. Then you. You, your game used to travel, you know, somewhere else and play. Yeah, but like you could give that Hagestat a run for his money, bro. I I think if no, I, I know uh, you can. he's I, being I, humble. I, I know here. you can. You're being way too humble. Like, do you not want to like play the monsters. Do you not want to play like the Northeast Amateur and just look, things Sunny like that? Hannah's Is that a thing right for you now? Or yeah, you? yeah, yeah. I, I think I think I want to compete and play five tournaments a year. But yeah. I I did do this this winter. I laid out a schedule and said, what would it take to prepare and to qualify because i'm not on the radar right now so i have to qualify and earn you know eligibility and um i'd have to commit like eight or ten weeks of my year because really? in these here's the funny part we, we don't realize this now because we were college kids but the tournaments are all monday through friday or monday through sunday so it's a full work week <laughs> yeah mm. you know and you're i like like last summer like I, I played in the uh it. southern am qualifier at seaside or at, at uh plantation shot 67 68 Missed by like one or two. Come on. Holy shit. Yeah, it's like a Monday qualifier for a corn fairy event. Jesus. Yeah, it was, it was pretty tough. But I think I was thinking about this, Matt, on the way here. I, you know, now that we're playing more golf together. Um, <laughs> you want me to get my M status back? I'm close, dude. I'm thinking you I'm get thinking your M status it. back. We could, we could four ball it together. I would yeah. 100% do that. How long would it take me to get my M status back? Didn't oh, they speed I can already up get that process? They sped it up. It's, uh, well, I hadn't Did you file? Yet. Have you filed yet? I didn't hit the, bu- the end button. Pe- John Peterson did that. I think he got it back already. Yeah, I think it's retroactive. It's, yeah. it's so yours easy. would be a little while. Mine's, I haven't played in four years, so I'm good to Mine go. took two weeks. They, really? They were like, yeah. you're not relevant. How we long did you weeks. play? Yeah, so mine, mine would take two weeks huh? as well because I haven't done it. How weeks. long did you try for? A few years? I played five or six years. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Matt, wh- you know, what do you think? So, hey, guys, here's a story about Matt at Pablo two weeks ago. Oh, this is brutal. Rape the, the back nine again? Like no, he tries, he tries to give me strokes. <laughs> So we're all, he's he's you know making every twenty footer he's like two under through six holes or whatever, and he's like I feel bad, let me give you like a half stroke on nine and half an eighteen and we're playing. I told him I told him at the start. I mean it's just not a. We're playing auto one downs. First of all, I'm never going to take shots from you. He okay, was a, he was about to lose. You're, you're not oh. you're, you're you're good, but you're not that good. I I don't <laughs> think I am either. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, you I'm a little scrappy. Thirty one on the back when he plays with me. I'm always winning at the turn and then I get crushed. So we did we did a uh, double or nothing on eighteen. And uh, Matt couldn't he couldn't fall, he couldn't follow through. We had to wash the bet out. What, what what do you mean? I lost, right? You lost, yeah. 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 What did we both tie eighteen, or did you beat me? I beat you on eighteen. No, he never remembers. That Great memory with no half stroke. With Matt's bets, you don't forget because he right for four hours he tells you how much better he is than you. And then, oh when, when my you, when, god! And then, and then when you bl- win, you're like, oh well, I can't forget this. It's this hard moment. to keep his I interest I was going in around. Extremely <laughs> humble out there with you. You were the for, first for you. You were. It was yeah. good. Yeah. I've what, changed what, a lot since college, dude. What's your index? Top. We should be a good match. Uh, I'm like a plus two or three. I'm a yeah. plus 1.8. Oh, stop. You're not plus 1.8. I am. I, I hand every card in. I love I entering my scores. I, I shoot 72 every time <laughs> I play golf. It sucks. There's some vanity. or I love the vanity handicaps, though, that like to gamble. Mm-hmm. Nothing better. We know, yeah, i got to keep a little we bit. We know a few of those. Gambling, yeah. It's good. Tyler, how did you? How I mean, you sound way more educated than University of Florida. How did, <laughs> <laughs> how, did, how did you wind up there? School of Business at University of Florida. Yeah. Um, so actually, I played two years at UNF, North Florida, ah. and then I transferred to Florida my last three years. And um, you know, it was kind of my dream to play big level D one golf. Play with you know, to play in the shadow of Matt Every was a, was a huge dream of mine. So <laughs> yeah, I, had, yeah. I had a chance yeah, to do go. it. Now it, it was one of those things where. Um, 
I was a late bloomer, you know, in college. I, I kind of started to own my game a little more and not be try to be a long hitter or shape the ball left and right. Just kind of be more of a scrappy, efficient golfer, and that worked. Um, I actually lost to Matt. You probably remember this story, but um, Sawgrass Country Club, the Mercedes Benz tournament. I birdied the last three holes to lose to you by one shot, and we get done, and I'm like. Hey man, congrats. And I'm feeling pretty good by myself. And he's like, he's just pissed about his finish. He bogeyed the last hole or whatever. <laughs> and he just wouldn't stop talking about how bad he finished. And I'm like, I had like the best tournament of my life. And we're not even like, come on, dude. Come you know, give me a throw me a bone here. I'm sorry. That's if okay. That. That's that okay. Was mean. It wasn't mean. It was, uh, I, wouldn't, I would not do that. <laughs> that's, now. that's why you won and I didn't win. That's what happens when you doiled. You just, <sighs> I, I do remember that tournament, but I don't remember you finishing second. Ah, uh, what a. Cool. That was good. No, was I'm good. just being real. I deserve that. That, that place good. is so. That tournament was so cold. That's probably what I remember most about that tournament was the time of year, the hate. I was at that tournament. You First were? week yeah. of February, yeah. it's always bad weather. Matt, I was following mm -hmm. you in your group. Actually, were y'all allowed to use rangefinders back then? No, no, no. I think I had a rangefinder and I was helping you, but there was. Mm. Oh, uh, oh, Tyler might have won then. <laughs> Funny. I might, I might have won then. Retro, you can have that Mercedes. <laughs> you find, find That's a great find. trophy, wasn't it? You, you get like an SL or something on top I got of one. It. Mine says second place on it. It's pretty cool. That was yeah. a good trophy. They just punched it, man. It was freaking like Augusta two months ago. Got to like, let it breathe, man, going into the summer. You yeah. played yesterday, didn't you? I played nine holes yesterday. Deep punch? It was deep, deep punch, but it's, it's playable. Yeah. Right after they punch it, it's fine. It's a bit... Like five days after they punch when it starts getting a little e. When the top dress wears off. Yeah, I like how they do it over three months because then the rest of the year it's perfect. You know they're not disrupting really good fall conditions for another punch. They kind of get it out of the way when we're all out of town and it's hot. Yeah, you have, you have three it's punches fine. this summer. <laughs> it, there's three, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. which is. And we clo which we're closed every week, for, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Are you doing the mid-am? Short-term pain. I'll do the mid-am. I'll probably do the Jacksonville City-am. Um, Where's that at? San Jose. San Jose this year, right down the street That's from here. The mid-am's at uh, Sleepy Hollow. I played the last uh, Thanksgiving places. Amazing. Yeah, yeah you need to. I need to get my amateur status back, too. Nah. It takes us. Yes and no. I don't know. Pricey, you're on the... Oh, yeah. you're, you're on like the country club circuit right now. You're playing all the top courses. And oh, listen, to, tell us to, about this trip you got yeah. coming up. How, uh, how it worked out. It gets better. We'll we'll see if it happens. No, no, no. Did so a group of guys from here are flying over to Scotland for eight days. I can't go because I have work. And um, I was originally I was supposed to be in Australia the whole month of June. So mm -hmm. I, was, I said can't go. Anyway, I'm here. We're going in December now. So one of the guys has rented a G550 to go over there. And originally it was going to go over there and sit there and then come back. Well, since then it's been chartered out back over here. So it's got to come back. So in order to go get them, it's going over empty. On the 27th, we can get on, land, leave Chicago, so maybe go up in the morning to Chicago. So you're booking a commercial flight to Chicago. Yeah, play golf there, maybe okay. Butler National or something there, somewhere cool. Why oh, not? Then fly at 6 p.m., lands at 7 a.m. We just did it. We were trying to get on Troon, but Troon has the uh, British Open next year, and we might be able to, but at the moment we're being told no. But we have a uh, press week for the day. You can really? play as many holes as you want. Wow. And we're coat and tie. So and, that. and then the second day, maybe Trump uh, Turnberry or Loch Lomond. I don't know. We're trying to figure that out. But we'll be there for like 30 hours and then get on the G550 back with the guys from Jacksonville. We'll see. <laughs> what, what are you guys paying to do that? It's free? It's free over. And I, the guy who's renting the 550 just said to everyone else, um, just give me the equivalent of a business cars ticket, which is like five grand. So I will give two and a half grand to come back wow but which, which ends up being like a fair bit of money what it's a, a cool, deal it's a cool trip yeah. oh dude that's awesome or, or what i want to do is i wouldn't want to get off that plane i'd be like let's just but keep the flying the 29th in chicago is a thursday i was going to fly straight to malaga and the liv event is at valderrama mm. I was, but i can't because lucy's got a her, she's got a trip planned so oh yeah that's right you got a wife and i kids, was gonna so. go to uh, spain <laughs> for two days uh, <laughs> yeah Oh, just, uh, there's always opportunities. Always get in the way. Uh, uh. <laughs> we do have a northern Michigan trip planned for September, which is going to be great. You do? Yeah. With the kids? No, no. <laughs> golf trip. Oh, another golf trip. Yeah, yeah. Pure oh. Michigan. Who's going? Uh, like Nate, Kapaz, Becca, those guys. Uh, nice. Same guys yeah. for Scotland? Different crew. Different crew. But I just like playing. I, I've, you know, when I played golf, a bit like 
I don't know if you're the same, but I... I love playing other courses. I never knew, like, architects. I didn't know that, you know, Stephen McDonald did Greenbrier and those crazy greens, and I'd played a few at Yale as well in an NCAA thing. Mm -hmm. But now I'm interested. I'm not a buff. I'm no Zach Blair or any of that, but I, I just enjoy it. Yeah. So if I, if I get the opportunity, I'd try and do it. You played Tree Farm yet? Have you? No, Doc invited me. No. <laughs> Doc flew up there on a little single engine. Doc Redmond's getting his pilot license. But I had just come back from... We did the Baker's Bay member guest, did the trip to Chicago for five days, and then I'm, the US Open qualifier I played, like Marion and National Golf Links, get back, and Doc's like, hey, do you want to get a tree farm Saturday, Sunday? And I probably could have gone. I just felt guilty. Mm. I so played the, uh, TPC it? Sawgrass on a simulator in San Marco the other day. <laughs> That's pretty. <laughs> what would you shoot? Well, we quit after eight holes, so uh, it was Bad too weather. slow out there. <laughs> too slow out there. <laughs> Have you played tree I was, I was pretty deep, no, actually. I haven't played it. I heard it's pretty... It looks cool. Great piece of land for a golf course. I think Zach Blair owns that land. Really? Did I tell you that? So he he, he started... We should have him on. We, he started that company and the club and head covers and that. And from that profits, I think he, he bought the land outright. Now, it could be completely wrong. Obviously, the whole construction of yeah, it's crazy, I, crazy money. It's attractive land. Many that, investors, but I think he owns the land. It had been long earmarked for, for a course, I believe. Uh, that's what Tron was telling us last week. Speaking of land, you know when you fly on planes and that, have you ever seen where the Georgia-Florida border, just on the Florida side, like yes. the, the very north end of Amelia Island? The cliffs? Mm -hmm. That would be the best golf course on earth. Isn't there already a... No, nah, there's nothing up there. It's all like preservation land or whatever. But Tyler, may, maybe make some calls. Tell me about the White we Oak. Should, we should go by the it. land. Isn't is, White Oak? Near no, there? White, White Oak's like White Oak's like 20 miles inland. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is like I, on the coast. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. The the St. Mary's River where it starts from the Atlantic. It's like a 40 foot cliff of sand there, kind of. It's insane. It, you, it might be environmental. Yeah, it's land, something. Like, you know, where it's there's a certain conservation easement or whatever. Cool, yes. Give it some time. Cool, yes. <laughs> we'll build the. Uh, <laughs> Whatever the part, the of, new, part of the TPC the POF network. headquarters, yeah. No, well, that'll be just the tour. Will have Jacksonville, they'll have Amelia Island. Not, think, a, not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> so, just to be clear, Aaron, if we want to go on a golf trip, we need a private jet for you to come. No, no, I'll, I'll, like fly, I'll, I'll fly in the toilet, I'll fly anywhere <laughs> I, in the in a commercial plane. No way, the toilet I, on the I get lucky enough to get on some of these PJs, but no, I, I went to Chicago, um, and and um, Pennsylvania on a, just slumming it. Yeah, you know, public airways, <laughs> Spirit <laughs> Airlines. Yeah, I fly Greyhound. Dude, I, I fly anyway. I don't care. I, I stay at uh, Holiday Inns wherever. Well, just do what I can. All right, Tyler. Thanks Ta for coming, bro. You're the man. That was awesome. Awesome. Man. It was fun. Yeah. Good chat. Hey, by the way, congrats on the uh, the lifestyle golf brand. Thank you. Thanks. It's going. It's going really Thank well. You. It's been fun to watch. Yeah, it's growing and growing. We're we're all psyched on it. Yeah, I love we'll, this place too. This is. Thank this you. The new, cool office. Shit. The, the new, new office. The new office. We're breaking we it in. It's about a month away from looking. The new orifice. <laughs> we got a TV. We got a fridge. I mean, it's uh, we're That's starting to add a few things. But yeah, thanks for saying that. We got to take you in the back and get you some some merch. Swag for your for your travels. That'd be great. Thanks, guys. Uh, cheers. Cheers.